we basically toss a coin, it's in mid-air, it's a quantum mechanical state, and when it lands, you surely know whether it's head or a tail, and that is a classical state. So the first uh, thought of quantum mechanics came into the picture when black body radiation, the experimental graph could not be explained. There were two theories. One was the Wien's distribution law, which explained only this portion, the blue one. And uh, the Rayleigh Gene's law only explained the higher wavelength region. So the entire curve was not explained. And this curve was explained by Planck's law. And the Planck's law expression was this. So today, if we actually plot a graph using this expression for different values of wavelength, the curve will actually replicate whatever is observed in experimental observation. So what did Planck say? Planck said that the energy that is being released by a body is in the form of packets, and that is what we call as energy packets. So atoms, molecules, okay, they will absorb or emit radiation in energy packets. It means that it's going to be discrete. It's going to be H nu when you use the frequency, or one, two H nu, three H nu, and so on. It's not going to be a uh, value with maybe 3 by 2, 4 by 3 and so on. Okay? Energies of atoms are quantized in a way we can say that. So the quantity is more or less fixed. And that's why when we look into the energy level diagrams, we say that if anything is in the ground state, it means here, this will be the ground state. And if it wants to be in the excited state, that energy value will also be fixed. There is no such energy levels in between. So this itself tells me that there is a discretization. Okay. So please remember these are nothing but representation of energy scales. Okay. And most of the times, if you look into any kind of you know articles, it will be in electron volt. So I need to apply an energy in terms of electron volt so that the atom or the electron can jump from this energy level to this energy level. Okay, so these are discretization of energy, and this entire concept is based on quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics is very important if we want to understand the atomic uh, uh, physics or nuclear physics. Okay, so modern physics, quantum mechanics is a very integral part because I told you if I want to analyze something from a microscopic point of view, I have to use quantum mechanics because classical mechanics fails to explain a lot of phenomena which are happening on the atomic scale. So that was not the only thing. Uh, in year 1905, photoelectric effect, you know, came into picture. And photoelectric effect or, you know, the Young's double slit experiment explains two different nature of electromagnetic waves. One was explaining the particle nature, which was the photoelectric effect. And if you consider something like interference or diffraction, that was actually the wave nature. And uh, Millikan, okay, uh, tried to do a lot of experiment in order to disprove photoelectric effect or disprove Albert Einstein. Einstein said that light will also have particle nature. Millikan didn't believe, and in the process, he has done a lot of experiment. And then finally, in 1916, he did the Millikan's oil experiment, which is very famous for finding out the charge by mass ratio of an electron. Okay. So eventually he failed, but all these uh, failures led to new discoveries as well. Okay, so it was uh, believed that you know the light waves or electromagnetic waves can have a particle nature as well as wave nature. Compton effect you might have studied. Uh, you know a wavelength gets scattered and it gets scattered with a longer wavelength, and that is actually Compton effect. That is also a quantum mechanical phenomena. Today we are going to study about the Broglie wavelength. We're also going to study about a topic called Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. That's later. And uh, when we want to, you know, analyze any physical phenomena, any theory, we need to have a mathematical interpretation. In quantum mechanics, the mathematical interpretation is being provided by Schrodinger equation. So we are going to use Schrodinger equation uh, after a few classes, and we are going to analyze that what information does this equation provide. So if you have a wave, and if you want to know the information, all these informations will be provided by Schrodinger equation. Coming back to your syllabus, okay, cannot start the topic without understanding de Broglie hypothesis and Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. So there are certain topics which is a must to understand quantum mechanics. First is de Broglie hypothesis. Then we are going to study about group velocity and phase velocity. And then we are going to study about Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. 
all of these ideas are very important and they are an integral part of understanding quantum mechanics so the question that might be asked in your exam okay i'll keep the screen for some time you can note it explain de broglie's hypothesis of meta waves and deduce the expression for wavelength so we are interested in finding out the expression for wavelength in the light of quantum mechanics okay so if you want to answer that uh, you can write down few sentences before you do your mathematical calculation that in the year 1924 louis de broglie actually suggested few things okay and all these suggestions were based on observation okay it's not that he actually has done an experiment at that time but it was based on observation of whatever scientific findings were done at that time so so what he said if the radiant energy has both wave and particle nature then matter must have wave associated with its motion right so that means if i have energy which can con, you know have some particle nature that means the particle that we are talking about the mass that we are talking about should also have a wave nature okay so it's vice versa and this is something which is called the symmetric character right if i can con see when we talk about radiant energy or electromagnetic waves it carries some energy with it so that means from uh, uh, energy we are getting some particle okay because or in the other hand from particle we should also get some kind of energy so reverse should also be true so that means matter and energy must have symmetric character that means if we consider the relation e is equal to mc square if mass can be converted to energy the energy should also be converted into mass that should also be true okay so when we look into the relation e is equal to h nu we know okay that energy and frequency are connected and we can have a relation at the same time we also have e is equal to mc square so we are going to use these two equations to derive the relation so what did de broglie do he used this planck's quantum theory okay and if you remember i told you in the last class planck's quantum theory said that energy is discrete and he used the concept e is equal to h nu okay and einstein's mass energy relation so what was our einstein's mass energy relation e is equal to mc square we have also derived it in the final topic of our first unit so einstein's mass energy relation so both of these were used to find out a relation for wavelength this wavelength that we are going to derive can be written in different form okay and we again solve a number of numerical problems based on this so we'll begin with particle nature of light waves suggested that energy of each photon okay so particle nature actually suggested that energy of each photon e is equal to h nu which is equal to h c divided by lambda that means nu is equal to c by lambda okay so i'm sure all of you know it but still i'll just explain or maybe i'll just revise this for you we all know that velocity is equal to distance divided by time and 1 divided by time is nothing but frequency and frequency we denote it either by n or nu this is your frequency into d right and when we talk about wavelength we know it is the distance right the distance something like this so that means wavelength is nothing but a measure of distance so this distance and wavelength will have the same unit dimensionality so we can say that velocity is equal to frequency into wavelength so that means frequency is equal to velocity divided by wavelength when we are talking about electromagnetic wave the velocity is represented by c so nu is equal to c divided by lambda so these things you might have done in your lower classes i'm just revising this for you this you don't need to write down when you are asking exam for solving this okay so we have got e is equal to h nu which is equal to hc divided by lambda okay and uh, what we can do now is i can mark this as number a and now 
what we can do is we can actually check the mass energy relation okay so what's our mass energy relation let's just use this from mass energy relation okay we have e is equal to mc square right if you consider the system and if it is the same system both these energies should be the same okay because you know by law of conservation of energy uh, a system will have both the uh, and also we know that it will have both particle nature as well as wave nature that means if it is the same system both these energies must be equal right so uh, if you just write want to write down an argument here okay by law of conservation of energy and uh, we can also put a line here like because of both particle and wave nature wave nature what we can say is we can equate both of them okay so i will say from a and b we have got e is equal to mc square so i put mc square in place of e is equal to hc divided by lambda right so we can just get rid of this uh, c and then we can write it down as lambda is equal to h divided by mc right so lambda i'll take it here mc i'll bring it to the bottom and this will be a relation and uh, uh, a very interesting point to note here is that here we are considering the speed of light as c so this relation should also be valid for any other velocity okay this c is replaced by v then also it should be valid okay so if we consider a particle of mass m okay so this is obviously an empirical derivation because it's valid for speed of light so if you consider another speed where the mass is already provided that should also give you the same relation okay so we can say this equation is also for a particle of mass m okay, moving with velocity v right so if we say that we can say therefore lambda is equal to h divided by m into v so we can actually take this relation lambda is equal to h divided by mv and this is actually called the de broglie's wavelength so i'll mark this as de Broglie's wavelength. Please remember, whatever we have learned till now, we do understand that if an object starts moving, its mass will be different from the mass when it is not moving. Since we are saying that it's a wavelength and we have the object moving at certain velocity, technically, we call this mass m as relativistic mass. Although when we do the calculations for relativistic mass in our day-to-day -day life and if the speed or velocity is very low this relativistic mass and rest mass both are going to be equal so this is the calculation for relativistic mass okay and we know relativistic mass is equal to rest mass this is something which we derived one minus v square by c square so don't get confused uh, if the speed is low relativistic mass and rest mass will be the same so if you get a question where you know the velocity is mentioned and if the velocity is mentioned to be around 100 kilometer 200 300 10000 kilometer per hour 
still you are going to use the same mass but in case the velocity is mentioned to be zero points some times of c maybe 0.6 c 0.9 c then you are going to use the relation for relativistic mass okay and that's obvious so you should not do that mistake if a question is asked like that okay it's very important okay so uh, you know mass into velocity is nothing but momentum so i can also write it down as lambda is equal to h divided by p now depending on what kind of question is being asked in your numerical problem you may use different forms of wavelength relation deep log this wavelength suppose you asked velocity mass and wavelength is given you can use this relation suppose you are asked to find out momentum only wavelength is given you can use this relation so use it uh, you know carefully and see which one is relevant according to the question and so now what we are going to do is we are going to check it in terms of kinetic energy let's uh, check other forms of this expression in terms of kinetic energy so let's see how we can write it down in terms of kinetic energy so we know momentum and kinetic energy are connected right we know it very well so we have kinetic energy is equal to half mv squared Right. and uh, let's just denote this kinetic energy with k so if we multiply both sides with m i can simply write it down as mk is equal to half m square v square or i can take it as half mv square and mv is momentum so it is half v square so we can say that p square is equal to 2 i can cross multiply this is 2 m times of k that means my momentum is root over of 2 m k so i have got a relation between momentum and kinetic energy we know de broglie wavelength has a momentum there so that means therefore we can say lambda is equal to h divided by p which is equal to h divided by root over of 2 m okay so now if the question is asked mass is given suppose and the wavelength is given and you are supposed to find out the kinetic energy we can use this h so this is one more relation that we have so it can be of different forms i might ask you a question to show the de broglie wavelength in terms of kinetic energy and you can do it okay so if you go for any kind of entrance exam after your uh, you know completing your engineering maybe any banking exam ssc civil services and all okay or engineering services and all okay there they do have those basic questions even on physics okay so the next thing that i'm going to do might help you there okay and uh, it's expected that you actually know this relation directly okay and that is nothing but de broglie wavelength in terms of potential energy so it has got a standard result and we are going to derive that okay so you know what is potential energy in general when we are talking about let's say two charged plates okay this is a minus that's a negative polarity and let's say this is the positive plate this is the positive polarity and we have got an electron somewhere now the electron is negative so it will travel from negative to the positive but this will only happen if we actually are having a potential difference right so if we apply some kind of potential we are going to see that the electron will travel from this end to the other end so this is the potential that we are talking about okay so we can actually write down this expression in terms of potential okay so uh, when we are talking about work done in presence of a potential this is a relation which you might have studied in in our low classes so let me write down this work done in potential difference that's denoted by capital v by an electron by and electron 
so that work done if you all remember is nothing but e into the potential difference so there is a very big difference between this small v and capital v all of you please don't mix it up okay when i'm asking you in exam you don't mix it up otherwise you will do your calculations wrong v is capital v and this is your small v so small v is the velocity okay, and capital v is the applied potential So please don't mix it up very important and that's why you should be able to write down your small v and capital v in such a way so that we can actually differentiate it okay it's important so w is equal to e into capital v and also what we know is kinetic energy is equal to half mv square but we have seen before also and we also know it from our preliminary knowledge of physics that kinetic energy is equivalent to the work done okay the energy stored in a system can be used to do the work so kinetic energy and work done are equivalent so this is also work done this is also work done so we can again equate these two and therefore we can simply say half mv square is equal to e into capital v so we can simplify because we want to write down de broglie wavelength in terms of uh, v and this side we can actually write it down in momentum form so if we do it 1 divided by 2m into m square v square is equal to ev or uh, 1 divided by 2m into p square and v square is equal to ev or p square is equal to 2m e v implies p is equal to root over of 2 times m e v okay you can do it this way or you can also check here kinetic energy is work done and work done and kinetic energy are equal work done is ev so you can just simply replace this k with ev that also can be done so yeah any way you like it okay just you have to remember that this is the result in terms of potential so that means i can write down the relation for wavelength so therefore lambda is equal to h divided by p which is h divided by root over of 2 times m a v and uh, everything is known now h 6.16 to 10 to the power minus 34 mass of electron charge of electron only maybe the potential is not known to us because it will depend on how much potential is being applied in volts okay so what we can do now is we can replace these values and check what's our answer so let's replace it this is 6.63 into 10 to the power minus 34 joule second divided by root over i hope all of you know the value two times mass of electron so that is 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 kg into charge of electron so that is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb and then we have got v so root over of v the potential applied so that means this particular term can be calculated so root over of v angstrom so if you just convert it you are going to get that okay because uh, you know 10 to the power minus 10 meter if i do it like this it will become 12.2 take one more decimal place 12.27 meter is equal to one angstrom so that's why I've written it in terms of angstrom. So this result is actually a standard which you should actually remember and should not do the calculations. Since we are doing it in our theory class, so we have to derive it and be confident that, okay, this is the answer. But this is a result that you should remember. So this is the wavelength in terms of potential. Very important. Okay. 
So you see, we have to be very careful when we do these kind of uh, problems and solve these kind of problems. Okay. Uh, so whenever you are using your calculators, also be a bit more careful. Okay. All of us has got different techniques of doing numerical problem. What I usually do is I'll take all the powers of 10, convert it into some even power. See, minus 31 minus 10, it is minus 41. So I'll take minus 40 into minus 1 and minus 40, I'll take it out of the root and then I'll do the calculation. It becomes a bit easy for me. Okay. So you can do it in your own way, no problem. But whatever answer your friend got is correct. So uh, this is a result which you should remember. So how many results we should remember? Well, quite a few of them. The first thing is lambda is equal to h by p. If you remember everything else, you can do it very easily. h by p, h by mp, h by root over 2 mk or 12.27 divided by root v and stuff. So this one is something which is a bit different. So this one you should remember. Now remember, this is actually for electron. So uh, if you're talking about uh, electron, this is valid. If you're talking about uh, you know something else like proton maybe, this won't be valid. You have to do your calculations, right? Because for proton, the charge may be the same, but the mass is different, 10 to the power minus 27, right? So that means it will be a different answer. So it depends on what particle you're considering. So please remember, this is only valid for electron, okay? So only for electron. So this was the derivation and I told you what's the question, right? So if you look on the top, uh, the question is, explain De Broglie's hypothesis of matter waves and deduce the expression for lambda, right? So explanation may be here, okay? And then the deduction is there. So you can find out different types of relation. If the mark is less, just derive one, that's it. Lambda is equal to h by mv, that's it. The mark is a bit more, you can think of including other derivations also. Just do justice to the marks when asked. Uh, another question might might be there from uh, this is a bit theoretical, okay? And this is a very obvious question, okay? The question is, why wave nature of de Broglie wave is not apparent in daily life? So why we can't, as de Broglie said, that every matter, you are a matter, I am a matter, okay? Uh, my laptop is a matter, whatever we have around us, which we can see, okay? It's a macro size, it's a matter. So if de Broglie says that every matter has got a wave associated with it, why don't we observe that wave that is associated with us mm -hmm. when we move, right? Because lambda is equal to h by p means it should have some momentum. That means velocity. So when I am moving, you are moving, do we have any wave attached with us? The answer is yes. But there is a problem because in most of the books you will see that the explanation given that we don't observe it is that the value is so low that it cannot be measured. That is partially true. First, we have to understand that what kind of matter actually shows wave behavior. What kind of matter will actually show wave behavior? So before I go to whatever is written here on the slide, I will tell you something here. Let's say, imagine you have got a cricket ball or maybe a football or something. And let's say its dimension is 0 0.1 meter. Maybe the radius or diameter or whatever. Okay? So this is the dimension. Now you throw this ball at certain speed, maybe 10 meter per second. Just throwing it at this speed. So you have the velocity. And let's say the mass of this ball is uh, 100 grams mass. What you can do now is you can calculate the de Broglie wavelength. So h is equal to or sorry lambda is equal to h by mv and then we can put the value of h, we can put the value of v and uh, mass in kg and so on and when we do it you will see that, that there will be some value here multiplied by an order which is actually 10 to the power minus 34. It will be in meter because h is in 10 to the power minus 34. So use this result. This dimension is 10 to the power minus 4, 34 meter. This is 0 0.1 meter. So the de Broglie wavelength is very, very small. The de Broglie wavelength is very, very small compared to the dimension, compared to the dimension. Maybe length, breadth, area, whatever you consider. 10 to the power minus 34 is very, very less than 0 0.1 meter. 
and that's the reason that you don't observe the wave nature if you want to observe the wave nature the dimension of that material must be comparable to the calculated de broglie wavelength if not we don't observe the wave nature are there any materials around for which this wave nature is observed yes for electrons so if you consider an electron we know its dimension it will be in angstrom because if you consider hydrogen atom the dimension is 10 to the power minus 10 or minus 9 meter right 10 to the power minus 9 meter for hydrogen atom and definitely if you consider electron the dimensions would be somewhere nearby so now if you use this and you know that electron mass we already know you also know that its velocity will be very high because electron moves at a very fast speed inside the nucleus so if you do the calculation we will see that the de broglie wavelength and the dimension of electron are comparable and that's why electron will show wave nature okay so that's the idea behind a wave nature is being showed or not showed by a matter you are a matter i am a matter an electron a proton is also a matter so depends which one will show de broglie wave in our daily life so this is what is written here in sentences so let's just read it when a particle will show particle or wave nature it is decided by dimension of the particle if the dimension is large compared to the de broglie wavelength right we can take an example 0.1 meter radius of a ball is small compared to the de broglie wavelength which may be of the order of 10 to the power minus 34 meter so practically in our daily life the dimensions will be somewhere in this range you can take a very large ball also doesn't matter you might throw it at using some machine maybe you're throwing it at 100 meter per second and then this maybe let's say uh, not 100 gram but even you take it 100 kg still this is going to be very small so the order will be somewhere of order 10 to the power minus 34 so if that happens we know that the wave nature is not observed okay so the question is why wave nature of de broglie wave is not apparent in our daily life this is the theoretical explanation mathematically if you want to you know you know give some kind of innovative answer you can think about some problems here in this context put the result and show that's it okay but can we do it for electron the answer is yes so if we observe we do an observation here the dimension of electron and its de broglie wavelength is comparable as i said with an example and hence an electron shows wave nature okay so this is very important uh, there is something which sir, i like can't to can't we do for the yeah sir can't we do for the proton yes we can do it and for proton also you will see that the dimensions are actually comparable and that's the reason that for proton also the observation of wave nature is possible okay so it depends on two factors because momentum is mass into velocity so if you have something on the numerator as 10 to the power minus 34 because that is h at the denominator also you should have an order let's say mass into velocity abhi electron le lete hain electron it is 10 to the power minus 31 kg and velocity may be of the order of let's say 10 to the power 8 okay so if you do your calculations here okay minus 34 uh, plus 8 31 plus 8 so it will be what 23 and minus 34 plus 23 the order will be somewhere around 10 11 okay so you know this is actually comparable to whatever is the dimension of uh, proton or i mean electron or proton so this minus 31 will become 27 but then if the velocity is more the chances of showing wave nature would be much more okay so more nearer the value the uh, you know the chances of showing a wave nature would be also more okay so for proton maybe we have to increase the velocity much more okay so that is very important so uh, it all depends on what's the dimension but then you know don't just take my words for this we have we can do certain calculations and check before we do the calculation i would like to do a bit of conclusion here which is very important lot of experiments have been performed young's double slit experiment diffraction experiments compton effect photoelectric effect okay if you think about all these experiments they will either explain the wave nature or the particle nature there has been no experiment designed till date which shows both wave nature and particle nature at the same time simultaneously maybe it exists maybe it's there in the nature okay 
maybe a scientist like you and me, we are actually still waiting to, uh, you know, to get it discovered, right? So if our science helps us and we are able to do it, and we are able to show the wave and the particle nature at the same time, probably you would be like, you know, awarded the Nobel Prize. OK, so, you know, there, the, these things are still something which is done in nature, but we're still to find an answer to it. OK, so this is very interesting. So uh, as I said, let's take some examples. So using this same idea, I said whether it will show wave nature or not, you can consider this example. Let's say you have got a ball of mass 170 gram and it is moving with a velocity of 40 meter per second. So we have got a mass, we have got the velocity. We can actually find out the de Broglie wavelength associated with it. So can any of you find out what's the de Broglie wavelength? And then I will go to the further discussion. OK, let's do the calculation. Find out the de Broglie wavelength and tell me what's the answer that you are getting. Okay. Let's just do it and get satisfied that yes, this may be the reason we are not observing the wave nature in our day to day life. Compared to, you know, in general, whatever may be the dimension of the ball. OK, so there are two reasons we cannot observe the wave nature. First thing, the dimension is very low compared to the dimension of the ball. And the second is such values are not measurable. Quantum mechanics restricts us from measuring such a low value. OK, so we don't have an instrument developed which can actually measure 10 to the power minus 35 meter. OK, so that's the reason we can do a similar calculation. OK, for electron. OK, and check if you use this velocity. For an electron, the velocity is this. You have to find out the associated de Broglie wavelength. OK, do this. Take the velocity to be 2.2 into 10 to the power 6 meter per second. OK, and check what you are getting for this. OK, this is 10 to the power minus 10. And if you look for an electron, the dimension would be approximately 10 to the power minus, oh, sorry, minus 9 meter. Why? Because if you consider hydrogen atom, the dimension has been uh, you know, given. The values are provided standard result. So it is around 10 to the power minus 9 meter. So the electron will also have a similar direction dimension because the hydrogen is the simplest atom. So uh, that's the reason that you can observe wave nature when we're talking about electron. So that's very important. Okay. Mm -hmm.